Thank you. The next item of business is a debate on motion 12317 in the name of Jackie Bailey on referral back to lead committee at stage one. National Care Service, Scotland Bill. I would invite those members who would wish to speak to please press the request to speak buttons and I call on Jackie Bailey to speak to and to move the motion up to six minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I come to this chamber more in sorrow than in anger and I come to move a motion to ask the Parliament to send the National Care Service Scotland Bill back to the Health, Social Care and Sport Committee for further evidence taking and consideration before stage one. This is only the second time that such a motion has been brought before the Chamber. Such is the serious, seriousness with which this action is taken. Members will know that I first proposed a National Care Service more than a decade ago. That was in response to Clostridium difficile that ripped through our hospitals and care homes, causing deaths as a result. People were transferred from hospitals to care homes without testing, care staff were without adequate PPE, standards were variable and there was little oversight at the time. Sounds all too familiar. And whilst Nicola Sturgeon said no 10 years ago, the SNP changed their minds and I do welcome all converts no matter how late in the day. So I've long believed in a national care service and therefore do not take this next step lightly. Let me set out why I think the Parliament needs to send the report back to committee. And let me at this point record my thanks to the Health Committee, the Finance Committee, the Education Committee, um, many other committees besides, and all the clerks for their diligent work on this piece of legislation. It hasn't been easy, but my beef is not with them. It's with the Scottish Government. Members should read the report from the committee. Page after page of criticism, requests for clarity, areas identified requiring substantial improvement. The Finance Committee looked at this twice and was still highly dubious about the budget. But the real problem arises with a backroom deal that was done with COSLA, a deal which changes the fundamental governance structures of the National Care Service. Now, some might agree that the deal is a welcome change. There are many in the independent sector, the voluntary sector, and those with lived experience of care who don't think it is right. But whether you agree or disagree, that is not the point. The point is that the committee has been unable to scrutinise this as the Scottish Government has been unwilling to share its amendments before stage two. And that was despite polite requests from the committee. The minister kept saying no. Despite an SNP member of the committee asking to see the target operating model, which would have given us a clue about the direction of travel, the minister still said no. This Parliament's history has too many examples of legislation which lie on the statute books simply incapable of being enacted because it is such a mess. Like the Hate Crime Act, passed in 2021, but not yet enacted. Or legislation that is sadly challenged in the courts because there was insufficient scrutiny of evidence. The National Care Service, frankly, is too important to get wrong. The government has already indicated that the National Care Service will not be up and running until 2028-29. So there is time to take an extra few weeks to scrutinise the government's amendments, which fundamentally change the governance arrangements. This should properly be considered at stage one. And there is precedent. Let me cite a recent example of the Rural Affairs and Islands Committee, who successfully argued that they should see this during the Wildlife Management Bill and got sight of amendments before stage one was completed. Now, many members in this chamber have noted in the past that stage two is in any event too short a process. Amendments are dealt with and dispatched at pace and where those changes have not been considered by committee at stage one, it does make for poor scrutiny and ultimately for bad legislation. The second issue for me is the lack of an expert bill advisory group. Now, every bill I have ever worked on in the past has had an expert advisory group because it helped government to shape the bill, but it also helped in the context of making sure the bill was capable of implementation too. Indeed. Liz Smith. I'm entirely in agreement with what uh, Jackie Bailey is saying, but can it... Well, it isn't a surprise, actually, because I think we both have exactly the same views about the importance of scrutiny in this Parliament. What I was going to ask uh, Jackie Bailey, if she agrees with me, 
that we seem to have a tradition in this Parliament now about too many framework bills, which mean that we don't have enough time to scrutinise because we don't have the necessary detail. Does she agree with that? Jackie Bailey? Um, I absolutely do. And in fact, the Delegated Powers Committee um, made that point, that it's not good legislative practice to stick substantive decisions and in spending into secondary legislation. But an expert bill advisory group, group simply doesn't exist for the National Care Service Bill. So there is a genuine lack of confidence that the proposed changes will work and promises of co-production after the bill is passed is not enough. Witness after witness described the bill as vague, lacking in vision and failing to articulate a set of general principles. Rachel Cackett from CCPS encapsulates the problem and I quote, I don't know what the bill will look like. For me, there is a question about what principles are being agreed at stage one and what exactly those amendments will look like. We also have Dr Jim Elder Woodward from Inclusion Scotland rightly complaining that the Scottish Government's deal with COSLA did not take any cognizance of the co-design process and that it was made without reference to any stakeholder. This Parliament is a relatively young institution. We don't have a second revising chamber. It is therefore important that we take the time to get things right. I want to support this bill, but it is currently a mess. We are in danger of making bad legislation because the government have not allowed appropriate scrutiny. This is about the integrity of the parliament and the integrity of us as members. Every party in this chamber, aside from the SNP and Greens, have expressed disquiet. Parliament matters, and I ask backbench members of the government parties not to just railroad this through. I move the motion in my name. Thank you, Ms Bailey. I now call on Sanjesh Gohani to speak to and to move Amendment 12317.1 up to five minutes, please, Dr Gohani. Thank you. I refer members to my register of interest as a practising NHS GP. I'm also a member of the Parliament's Health, Social Care and Sport Committee. Presiding Officer, the lead committee charged with scrutinising the National Care Service Bill had four sessions with COSLA. And we now know every single one was a waste of time. Now, this isn't COSLA's fault. It's not the MSP's fault. It's because the Scottish Government eventually came to the conclusion that Humza Yusuf's original version of the NCS bill simply wouldn't work. So they pulled it, and they changed much of what had been focused upon and scrutinised for the past 18 months. We were unable, and still are unable, to ask appropriate questions due to unseen changes the Government are making why not just let us see the bill in full, the full detail? Is it not ready? Do they even know what they want? This is a secret group creating secret changes in a secretive SNP government at the helm. When it comes to the latest SNP rebrand of the NCS bill, health committee members are well aware there is a dearth of detail and so many unanswered questions. Many questions, including over money, and it's not just opposition members shaking their heads. Parliament's Finance and Public Administration Committee has repeatedly raised concerns about how this would all be funded, that costings did not and could not reflect the actual costs on the provisions of the bill. The SNP Green Government are already spending over £800,000 every month on civil servants for the National Care Service. To get the NCS up and running, we are told by Social Care Minister Marie Todd to expect a total spend of £2.2 billion. But that's all very unclear, given the many iterations of the Memorandum of Financial Understanding that have gone through. This bill is far from ready for a stage one debate and vote, and the lead committee has simply not been able to properly examine what's now on the table, because we don't know what's on the table. Despite warnings from the SNP Green Government, it says it's unable to articulate and communicate how their National Care Service would actually work in practice. Parliament is being asked to support a bill on the basis that come the second reading, all will be revealed. Really? Well, that's not how scrutiny of legislation is supposed to work. We're not just here to give the government the benefit of doubt. All of us, all of us here, are here to scrutinise the government's plan and decisions made to make sure the people of Scotland get a good deal, not the best guess. The fact is, the only reason this bill is going on the agenda tomorrow is because the Health Committee voted along party lines. To be clear, 
MSPs on the Health Committee are united in our thinking that the bill must be sent back for proper scrutiny if we are not in government. The four committee members who are not SNP or Green dissented from up to 46 of the report's 110 points of recommendations, including support for the bill's general principles. SNP Green ministers may well respond by saying, well, this is a framework bill, and at this stage we only need to agree the principles. Well, this is not good enough. It's not right to push through a bill that the government itself can't even articulate. If the current bill were a car, we don't know what make, what model, or even what colour this car is. And the government is suggesting we put down hundreds of millions of pounds in a deposit anyway. Yes, I will give way. Uh, I thank Dr Gohani for giving way. Uh, and there has been much talk from the opposition uh, around about a framework bill. Can I remind the Chamber, President Officer, uh, that the National Health Service was established uh, in the UK using a framework bill. Thank goodness those folk back in the day had the radical uh, view of uh, doing it Mr. that way Stewart, to create Stewart, what is, is an Mr. institution Stewart, is which works for all. Member... It's a pity that Dr Gohani and others do not Thank have you. that radical Mr. edge Stewart, that Nye Bevan and others do. Thank you. Dr Gohani, please continue. Well, no question. If you wanted to speak, just put your name forward and do a speech. I ask members across this chamber to vote, not along party lines, but on the principle that committees and scrutiny of legislation are important. Thank you. And I move the amendment in my name. Thank you, Dr Gohani. I now call in Minister Marie Todd. Up to five minutes, please. The National Care Service Scotland Bill is our opportunity to reform the social care system in Scotland. I welcome the Parliament's consideration of such an important issue. Mm -hmm. But the fact that I'm here to prevent what is essentially a delay in delivering this much needed change is disappointing. Mm -hmm. People, I have five minutes. I have five minutes. I will not be taking interventions. People across the country deserve better. And that's what the bill will bring. Most importantly, it will put the people who access social care services right at the heart of our system. We've all, we're already working hard to make the changes needed in the social care system in Scotland, but the reality is we need longer term, widespread reform to fix some of the issues that are ingrained within the system. Now, I don't intend to set out fully today the government's approach to the National Care Service and this bill. The stage one debate, already scheduled for tomorrow, yeah. will provide the right opportunity for that. That debate has been a long time coming. I have welcomed the scrutiny that the Scottish Parliament have brought to the bill. Seven committees have reviewed the bill in the 20 months since it was introduced and my officials and I have met with thousands of people to discuss the National Care Service. This is surely one of the most extensively scrutinised bills ever to go through the Scottish Parliament. We've worked hard to ensure that all of the committees have been provided with everything they have asked for to help their considerations often at short notice, and I'll continue to do everything I can to ensure the important business of parliamentary scrutiny continues to be respected. I'm grateful to the Health and Social Care and Sport Committee for the substantial Stage 1 report that they published last week. That report makes more than 100 recommendations, and my officials and I are currently considering those. And whilst it's important to take due time to consider all of these recommendations fully, I have already written to the convener of the committee, welcoming the report and signalling my agreement to provide further information to the committee. I'd previously committed to providing a summary target operating model for the National Care Service to the committee. I've shared that today. I've 
also this week shared a fact sheet with them all members that provides an overview of our plans for the National Care Service that summarises the material previously provided to the Health, Social Care and Sport Committee and the Finance and Public Administration Committee. In brief, it describes our intention to create a National Care Service Board to oversee social work, social care support and community health services and to drive transparency and consist consistency and to reform local integration joint boards. Officials have already dis arranged to discuss stage two arrangements with the clerks to the committee to ensure that sufficient time is built into the timetable to allow for thorough scrutiny and, if necessary, more evidence. This is a key priority should the general principles of the bill be agreed to tomorrow at stage one. We need to listen to the different views I've heard from so many stakeholders, to the perspectives that seven committees of this parliament have already heard in evidence, to the voices of thousands of people who rely on social care provision, who have taken part in our co-design co work, and to carers who provide such essential support. People need change, and they are telling us they need it now. Of the many thousands of people we have spoken to who are trying to access social care in Scotland now, none are telling me to slow down. Everyone is telling me to speed up. We will ensure that the parliamentary process is robust, but we are letting people down if we spend our time in Parliament getting tangled up in procedural delay instead of talking about the substantive issues that impact on people's lives. Focusing on the parliamentary process is not helping those people who really need it. Delaying this vital work means hugely significant policies like our rights to break for carers and Anne's law will be delayed in their introduction. There is an important debate to be had about how we demonstrate the value of social care in Scotland, about how we ensure that people who require social care get access to the help they need wherever they live, about how we embed human rights in social care provision. And I look forward to that debate tomorrow. Thank you, Minister. I now call on Claire Hockey to speak on behalf of the Health, Social Care and Sport Committee. Up to four minutes, please, Ms Hockey. Thank you, President Officer. The Health, Social Care and Sport Committee has undertaken extensive scrutiny of the National Care Service Scotland Bill since its introduction in June 2022. That has included two calls for written evidence, 18 panels of witnesses, as well as three oral evidence sessions and multiple exchanges of correspondence with the responsible minister. The committee held a number of informal engagement sessions with a range of people with lived experience and different experiences. And to inform its scrutiny further, the committee commissioned a literature review of international models of social care, including a combination of different models in UK countries, EU countries, Nordic countries, Switzerland, Alaska, the USA, Canada, Japan, Australia and New Zealand. The committee also visited Aberdeen, where members met representatives of Granite Care Consortium and visited Camp Hill Community to engage with staff and service users. It visited Dumfries, where members met informal, had informal discussions with Stuarty Care and other organisations representing registered care homes, registered care at home and wider community and third sector organisations. On a visit to Glasgow, committee members met with representatives from the Coalition of Care and Support Providers in Scotland and service users and frontline staff from the Quay before holding a formal meeting at the William Quarriers Conference Centre. Meanwhile, six other committees have undertaken their own scrutiny of those aspects of the bill that were relevant to their remit. On July the 20th, uh, the 12th last year, the Scottish Government wrote to inform the committee it had reached an initial consensus agreement with COSLA on a partnership approach that will provide for shared legal accountability with respect to the proposed National Care Service. On the 20th of September, the Scottish Government confirmed its intention to bring forward amendments to the bill to reflect the changes required as a result of the consensus agreement with COSLA. My committee subsequently wrote to the Scottish Government on the 7th of November requesting additional information regarding the precise implications of this consensus agreement for the Bill and received a detailed response from the Minister on the 6th of December. 
The committee's stage one report, which was published last week, sets out in detail the conclusions and recommendations we have reached as a consequence of our exhaustive scrutiny. The consensus agreement with COSLA on the shared legal accountability means a number of key aspects of the bill will need to change. Accountability for social care will no longer be transferred from local authorities to Scottish ministers. Integration joint boards will no longer be replaced by local care boards. Instead, a national care service board is proposed. And local government will now retain social care functions, staff and assets. The Scottish Government has made clear its intention to bring about these changes to the Bill through amendments at Stage 2. And on this basis, a majority of the Committee has recommended that the general principles of the Bill be agreed to. But we have done so on the understanding that further scrutiny of the changes the Scottish Government now proposes to make to the Bill should take place as part of an elongated Stage 2 process. That would include a further written call for evidence the gathering of additional oral evidence before we progressed to the formal part of stage two, and that is the consideration and the disposal of amendments to this bill. I regret it was not possible for the committee to reach a consensus position on the general principles of the bill at stage one. However, I want to underline my commitment to ensuring that substantial further scrutiny takes place at stage two, as I have outlined. Thank you, Ms. Hockey. And I now call on Alex Gore Hamilton. Up to four minutes, please. Uh, thank you very much indeed, uh, Presiding Officer. I rise to support to the motion in the name of Jackie Bailey. Presiding Officer, I think there's an element of ministerial cosplay at work here. I mean, if you listen to the remarks of the Minister and her predecessor, Kevin Bevan, or Kevin Stewart, um, who evoked the name of Nye Bevan, you'd be forgiven for thinking that they imagined themselves in the rubble and poverty of 1940s Britain, in which the NHS, our much-loved national institution, was first forged. But we aren't in 1946. And apart from the nomenclature, uh, the reality of the National Care Service, the similarities end. This will not give care free at the point of delivery. It is, in fact, a ministerial power grab. What lies before Parliament that will debate on Thursday if this motion to defer it is not successful is merely a framework, but a framework that will still cost in the order of £2 billion. And for what? A vast and unnecessary ministerial bureaucracy that strips power from our communities and gives it to the centre. So let me be clear from the outset. My preference would not just be to defer this bill, but to scrap it in its entirety. We are clear, the Liberal Democrats are clear, that it represents little more than a mammoth bureaucratic exercise which would waste time and money that would be far better spent elsewhere. But I support it also being referred back to the committee today because the call for stakeholder evidence went out and came back over a year ago. That evidence was geared towards the first version, the first iteration of this legislation. But what is being put before Parliament this week is a different version of the bill altogether. Indeed, there are a lot of this is no longer happenings in the convener's remarks. Surely that should all give us pause to thought and say this parliamentary process has been derailed and must be start again if it has to continue at all. And the landscape around it has fundamentally changed and so too have the proposals in the bill. During its consideration of the bill, the committee didn't have the full detail of what has been proposed. We just heard that in the convener's remarks. The so-called National Care Service would look like and stakeholders, uh, stakeholders haven't seen that detail either. Let me quote directly, presiding officer, if I may, from the pages of the committee report, which says that one of the challenges, and I quote one of the challenges the committee has faced with the bill, has been the lack of available detail at the start of our scrutiny. That is a fundamental problem with any piece of legislation going through a democratically elected parliament. Members of the Finance Committee, who very publicly last year said that their numbers didn't stack up, still say today that they still harbour grave concerns. The presiding officer, this is just not the way we should be doing business in this place. It is absurd that we should begin the legislative process in this context. Now, the minister was very clear that she said that people are telling her we need change. Well, they're right. We do need change in our social care, but it's not the kind she has in mind. It, when people talk about reform and change of the care sector, they want to be sure that when your grand needs help, she'll get it when she needs it, and it'll be cheaper than it has been with reliable staff that we can 
all access in every part of this country. She, they're not imagining a ministerial paragraph that will asset strip our communities, put power in the hands of ministers rather than social care partnerships to direct their care uh, entirely. This is a bureaucracy. It will cost a lot of money. And Liberals believe fundamentally why we oppose this in its entirety is that power always works best when it is closest to the people it serves. That nothing about this bill will deliver it and nothing, nothing about this bill resembles in any way the National Health Service of which we should all be rightly proud. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Gohamilton. We now move to closing speeches. I call on Sanjay Gohani. Up to two minutes, please. Thank you. The Minister said focusing on parliamentary process was not needed. This is not obtuse process. This is scrutiny. It is clear this secretive SNP government do not want scrutiny. The conveyor, the, the convener of the Health Committee is right in saying that the extensive scrutiny was performed but when secret fundamental changes happen, we are unable to perform proper scrutiny. For example, we took no evidence from Kosler regarding the agreement. Do you not think that might be important? What are the facts? The National Care Service was introduced in 20th of June 22. We started taking public evidence in Health Committee in October 22. Humza Youssef realised this bill was not going to work and pulled it. We had four delays instigated by the government. With all this dither and delay, why are we rushing through stage one when we have no idea what the government is doing? Simply put, are the amendments ready? If they are, then why the secrecy? If not, then this government simply needs to stop making it up as they go along. The lead committee could not take appropriate evidence or ask appropriate questions because we have not seen the actual bill due to the massive changes being made and the fundamental changes being made. Members, our job is to scrutinise bills and we cannot allow this precedent to be set. Otherwise, it undermines the role of committees. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Gohani. I now call on Carol Walken to uh, wind up the debate. Up to Thank uh, you, three minutes, Presiding please, Officer. The establishment of a national care service gives this Parliament the chance to be bold, ambitious, and innovative. And can I be clear, it is not us who are delay delaying this. I fear it is actually the government. This could have been brought forward 10 years ago. The Scottish Government have chosen to force through a bill through its stage two when it falls seriously short of the mark. And the convener is correct to say that we took hours of scrutiny. Yep. The report, page after page of criticism and a major change with a deal with COSLA. Now, last minute, the Minister has chosen to send a letter to, this, to the members in this Parliament rather than uh, engage with the committee. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have three minutes to respond to this. Yeah, the yeah. committee would be able to take proper scrutiny if the minister would come in front of the committee. Does, uh, presiding officer, time and again, trade unions, the third sectors, carers and those who receive care came to the committee and to members individually to express serious concerns about the way this bill was progressing. But the conclusion is to ignore this and push on anyway. Minister, if you have spoken to hundreds and hundreds of people, then you have not listened to hundreds and hundreds of people. And hundreds and hundreds of people through their stakeholders are still very confused. A national care service is something that Labour has called on for years because if delivered properly, it will deliver that much needed parity between health and social care. Presiding officer, it is challenging to fully understand the SNP's motives when it comes to their stubborn position on the National Care Service. It is widely acknowledged this bill, as laid, has changed direction significantly, is unclear and needs further scrutiny at stage one. The government itself agrees. I know members on the Health and Social Care Committee agree and other committees have expressed extensive concern about this bill. Stakeholders are continuing to express extensive concerns. 
I want to address the uh, notion that the Minister put forward is that we have to delay things. There was extensive uh, evidence on the committee to tell us about the things that we can take forward at this point in time. Fair work principles the, through the trade unions, also the work on ANS law. These things do not require to be delayed. This is what the government chose to tell people about the National Care Service. Presiding officer, as you have heard from my colleague Jackie Bailey, Labour want a national care service. My colleague and I tried hard on committee to fight for an expert advisory group. It was rejected. We asked for amendments to come at stage one. It was rejected. And we eventually had to ask for the general principles of the bill, which are completely unclear, to be rejected. But the committee chose not to do that, although there was division and this was significant. Yes. Presiding officer, I know I have to close now, but I hope that other members, particularly the backbenches, will choose to send this back for proper scrutiny at the Health, Social Care and Sports Committee. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Malkin. That concludes the debate on referral back to lead committee at stage one, National Care Service Scotland Bill, and it's now time to move on to the next item of business, and there will be a very short pause to allow front bench teams to change position. Thank you.